Okay, those are the two most pressing debates. But going back to culture, there are different characteristics within culture that we're going to talk about. The next three chapters, we're going to talk about some of those characteristics of culture. Chapter five, we're looking at languages, how we communicate with each other. In chapter six, we're going to be talking about religions. Different people in different parts of the world that have different culture than us practice different religions. And then finally, in chapter seven, do we all look the same? No, people look different. We're going to talk about ethnicities. You go to different parts of the world, people look different. They act different. They do different things than maybe our culture that we're used to. Um, so we're really going to dive into this idea of culture, and we're going to look at some very specific characteristics. Chapter 5, we're focusing in on language. Now, how do you communicate with your friends? Some ways that kids have told me in the past is, Mr. Crane, emojis. I communicate with my friends via emojis. I can text an entire message, emojis, and my friends know exactly what I'm saying. Is that you? No. Okay. Um, and this may have been so past, but some people communicate in just letters. Like, for example, um, my realtor, my, I, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but my wife and I recently have sold our house. We're closing on our house next week and we're moving out of that, that part of Fort Myers. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're very excited to be moving, moving out of that, that neighborhood. Um, and my realtor, I had thanked my realtor for something and she sent it back to me, T.Y. And I thought, T-Y? And as soon as, in my mind, as soon as I said, what is T-Y? Oh, that's thank you, right? Do any of you communicate like that? Okay, some of, some of you do. Okay, any other ways that you communicate your language to each other? Do any of you use nonverbals? Like maybe, might give someone a look, a friend a look, or you may smile, or you may do the eye roll, any of you communicate that way? All right, and it's amazing among your friends, right, among the guys, among your girlfriends, you can communicate your language to each other is very well known, and sometimes you don't even have to say a word. Well, for us to communicate with others, we have to speak, don't we? We have to speak. And so that's what we're going to get into today with some definitions. All right, so let's look at that first question. I want you to highlight where are languages distributed, okay? There are well over 150 languages in our world today. Isn't that amazing to think about? And within languages, there are what we call dialects. Have you ever been talking to somebody who is speaking English and you can't understand them? When I lived in Ohio, no, this is no, no joke, there was a very, very nice Christian man. He was from deep in the heart of Kentucky. And he was good friends with my dad, but whenever he would um, talk, had a hard time understanding him. And he always used to say, um, there is a fur in them hills. And I never understood what he was saying. I said, fur, you mean the fur of an animal? And my dad looked at me and said, no son, he said fire. But he would always say fur, there's a fur in them hills. Well, he was saying fire, but I was, he, to, in my ears, I was hearing as, as a boy, fur, you know. Um, some people in different parts of the United States, instead of saying creek, when they talk, they say, I'm going down to the creek to go swimming. All right, Have you, you know what I'm talking about? People say different words, and they're communicating the same thing, but the 
their dialects, their different ways of saying the English language. And I'm sure as you get older and you get out on your own, you're going to encounter things like that. Have you ever heard um, the, the southern draw when people talk? It, it's, it sounds a little different. If you go up to the Midwest, Minnesota, and Michigan, you know, as they say a sentence, they may end it with A. You know, it depends on where you're at in the United States, but language sounds different, okay? And those would be considered dialects. So let's look at some of the definitions. Go ahead and highlight these. We're going to start with uh, ginger. I'm just going to have you read the definition, okay. and then we'll jump into some of these. Define language. A system of communication through speech, a collection of sounds that a group of people understand to have the same meaning. Very good. So it's a collection of sounds. All right. It's a system of communication. Official language. Yeah. Language adopted for use by the government for the conduct of business and publication of documents. Okay. So, for example, many of you later this year, potentially even next year as sophomores, are going to be getting a very important document, aren't you? What is that document? Graduation? Exactly. Yeah, it's not really a document, but it's a small document, right? Many of you are going to be turning 15, you're going to be able to get your driver's permit, and then next year as sophomores, the all-important driver's test and driver's license, right? It's a pretty big milestone in, in your young lives. Um, that is all in English. All right, now, this is very interesting at this point. English is not the official language of the United States, but it is the official language that are on all documents. For example, if you open a bank account, if you were to go to BBT Bank, or you were to go to Fifth Third Bank or Bank of America, and you were to open a checking account, they would give you a document that you had to sign, and that whole document would be in English. If you went and purchased a car, you turned 18 years old, and one of the first things you wanted to do was go and purchase a car at a Chevy dealer or a Maserati dealer or a, a BMW dealer, okay? You would go and you would get that car, and you would have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. That language on that paperwork would be English. That would be an official language. They're not going to give you paperwork in German or in French because you would have no idea what it was saying. Now, um, language family. All right, James? A collection of languages related through a common ancestral language that existed long before recorded history. Okay, good. Language branch. Logan? A collection of languages within a family related, related through a common ancestral language that existed several thousand years Branch and then uh, Steph, how about language group? A collection of languages within a branch that share a common origin in the relatively recent past and display many similarities in grammar and vocabulary. Good. Okay, on page 144, 145, I want you to highlight figure 5 3 and figure 5 4. Okay, on page 144 and 145, figure 5-3 and 5-4. Now, you're going to want to really pay attention to both of these charts, all right? College Board loves using these on um, their AP exam, and I love using this throughout the year on the chapter test. Now, what are, what are we looking at? First of all, does everybody see everything below the line? You see the line there on 144, 145? I'm giving you a huge help. You don't have to worry about the things below the line. Okay? I, I, don't, I don't care about that. What I do care about is everything above the line. You see kind of the tree on 144 and 145? Don't worry about things below the line. Above the line, I want you to focus on. Now, do you see the different trunks? The different trunks are the part of the tree where the branches and the leaves come off of. So by looking at 
this here, what would be the largest trunk? Maddox? Indo-European. Okay, Indo-European. Does everybody see Indo-European? Okay, that is um, the trunk. All right, so you could just put, kind of by language family, you could kind of put in parentheses by language family, trunk of the tree. Okay, so this is the base on your definitions, on your definitions where you have language, family, just kind of the analogy that you could use would be trunk of the tree. So what would be some of the other language families? Maddox listed Indo-European, what would be a couple others? Sino-Tibetan. Okay, yep, Sino-Tibetan. What else? Austronesian. Austronesian, yep, what else? Okay, yeah, Korean, right, Japanese, you have Austroasiatic, Altaic, Dravidian, Afroasiatic, do you see the, the language families? Those are the trunks. Now let's go up each trunk, all right? Let's go up Indo-European. What would be one of the branches on Indo-European? Okay, yeah. So you would go up and you would see romance, right? So the branch, the branch of the tree is going to be number four. On your definitions where you see it says language branch, I want you to put kind of the analogy, that's the branch of the tree. Okay, so the branches within the language family, there are going to be different languages that are spoken that are still within that family. And then finally, we get to number five, the language group. What do you think the language group would be? What analogy of the tree could we use? The leaves. The leaves, very good, very good. Why don't you put that by number five? That's the analogy that we can use. So to go on what James said, within the romance branch of the tree, what would be some of the leaves that would make up the romance branch? Jackson? Italian. Okay, Italian. Portuguese. Portuguese, they sound very similar, by the way. Spanish. Spanish, good. Romanian. Romanian, okay. What else? Haitian Creole. Okay, good. Sounds very similar to French. Steph? French. Okay, yep, good. Um, so you get the idea, right? You get the idea. So you need an analogy to kind of help you in your understanding. Now take a look at figure 5 4 real quick. Okay? The sentence says the chart below shows the percentage of people who speak a language from each major family. What would be the two most spoken language families in the world? Anybody? Indo-European and Sino-Tibetan. Very good. All right, put little stars by Indo-European and Sino-Tibetan. Okay. What country do you think speaks a lot of the Sino-Tibetan language family? China. China. Yep, and China is the most populous country in the world. Indo-European, what country do you think speaks the Indo-European language family? Europe. Europe and? Russia. Parts of Asia. The United States, okay. English is the most spoken business international language in the world, followed very closely by Mandarin and Spanish. But English, if you want to be in international business, the number one language that you're learning, if you don't already know it, is English. Because most international business flows through the United States of America. So you have to learn English. And that's why many scholars around the world that don't already know English learn English first, even above Mandarin Chinese, even above Spanish. All right, so, very, very important, both 
of those. All right, let's get into number six. All right, and let's look at these notes. I'm going to read. I'm going to read these. Feel free to update as we go through this. Um, by the way, let me just ask you a general question because I put a lot of notes. I saw a lot of you adding to your notes. What do all of these have in common? What are they? Language. Their language. Trumps. Families. All right. I want you to put all of these are language families. They're trunks. They're tree trunks. That's something all of these have in common. They are language families, which means what? If they're language families, what do each of these categories have underneath them? They, they each have just the different roots or some sort of root. Okay. Well, you have the trunk, but then what comes out from the trunk? Branch, branches. They have branches, and then what's on the branches? Trees. The trees. So what this means is each of these groups have a lot of individual languages underneath them, don't they? Don't they? So when you start thinking about language, there's a lot of languages in the world. A lot of languages. And that makes humanity very unique and different. Language makes humanity very unique and different. So let's look at some of these. The, the two largest are first. Indo-European, the language family, underneath Indo-European, you can look here. You have all kinds of different languages, don't you? If you look at the Indo-European trunk, just look at that. Look at all the branches. Look at all the individual languages. Those are that represents millions and millions of people, class. Millions of people, tens of millions of people speak Indo-European languages. Some of the groups would be Germanic, Romance, Balto Slavic, Indo-Iranian. Okay. These are just some of the language branches within the language family, okay? And then within these branches, you have individual languages. Like we just talked about Romance, you have Haitian Creole, you have French, you have Spanish, you have Portuguese. I mean, it is, this is your first exposure to it, this is not my first exposure to it, but when I first started learning how many languages are in the world, my mind literally blew. It is, it is fascinating to think about how many languages people speak in the world. I knew a kid in high school that spoke eight languages fluently. Eight. You know you can go to university, you can go to college and major in world languages. It's called linguism, being a linguist. And you actually can go to college and study world languages and get very lucrative jobs just because you speak multiple languages. Businesses will hire you to travel all over the world to speak Arabic, to speak Japanese, to speak Mandarin Chinese. I mean, it, it's, it's fascinating, and it's a big part of culture. Sino-Tibetan, 21%, a little over 20% of the world speaks this, primarily in China, in parts of Asia, do we see Sino-Tibetan? Okay. Um, Austronesian, where do we see this? Well, you know where Indonesia is? What part of the world is Indonesia in? South, East Asia. South, East Asia. East, Southeast Asia. Okay, so parts of Southeast Asia are going to speak languages within this family. Now, is Austronesian as large as Sino-Tibetan or Indo-European? No. So what does that tell us? As long as it's spoken in the region, that's in. Exactly. Austronesian language family is more regional. It may not necessarily be global, 
like Sino-Tibetan or Indo-European. It's more regional. Okay? Indonesia is thousands of different islands. But as you get outside of Southeast Asia, Austronesian languages probably are not spoken as, as frequently. All right, let's look at Austro-Asiatic. Okay, where's Vietnam? The Vietnamese people. Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Again, this is going to be regional. You get outside of Vietnam, and the languages in uh, Austro-Asiatic, okay, and then the individual languages, probably are not going to be spoken a whole lot. Now, let me ask you this. People that speak languages within the Austronesian language family, people that speak languages between the Austroasiatic language family, would they be more pop culture or folk culture? Absolutely folk culture. Okay? Absolutely 100%. Okay? Because the only way you're going to learn Vietnamese is if you study Vietnamese if you go study abroad in Vietnamese for six months or your neighbor is Vietnamese and you say, you know what? I want to learn Vietnamese from you. Will you teach me? I mean, if that's a life goal of yours to, lose, to, to learn Vietnamese, that's awesome. But that's not very high up on a lot of people's lists. That's a telltale sign right there. That probably is a folk culture. Okay. Very regional, not, not global. All right, let's look at Thai Kadai. Now you're getting even smaller, right? Where's Thailand? Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia, again. So you have a lot of language families, one, two, three, count them, that are specific to Southeast Asia. A lot of different languages. Japanese, well... Japan, right? Japan, very, very specific. Have any of you ever tried writing Japanese or uh, Mandarin Chinese? Have you seen the symbols? Um, before this chapter is out, I'm gonna show you Japanese and Chinese symbols. Um, very difficult to write, okay? And they actually, they write differently than we do uh, in English. When we write in English, we write from what side of the page to what side of the page? Left to right. right. Yeah, left to right. A lot of world languages, when they write, it's going to blow your mind, they write right to left. That would be very different for you, wouldn't it? They start on the right side of the page, they write right to left. Okay, everything you've ever learned in writing, you indent, you start on the left, and you go to the right. So, your mind would have to get used to, if you learn some of these languages, how to actually write it, because writing it is different than saying it. Everybody, everybody knows that. All right, so let's, uh, let's keep going. We're doing good here. We got a lot, of, a lot of others. Korean, okay, help me here. Korean is? Korea. Korea, the Korean Peninsula, all right, North and South Korea. Korea would be in what part? In the north. Would be like north. Or just east. It would be in East Asia. Okay, so once again, we're talking about Asia. All right, Korean would be in East Asia. And Korea uses symbols very much like the Japanese and the Chinese do. Okay, very much. Um, some people today, kind of making a reference of pop culture, will get different Chinese symbols or Japanese symbols as a little tattoo. You know, they'll get it like on their, their arm or they'll get it on their ankle, like peace, love. You know, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Koreans have different symbols for all of those different words. Um, and so, and I will show you kind of the difference of those three because they are a little different um, before, you know, of course, before the chapter is, is up. All right, Afroasiatic. So now we're shifting a little bit. Put a star by Afroasiatic. This is another big one because what major language is under Afroasiatic? Arabic. 
Arabic, right? Circle Arabic. Arabic is the major language of what religion? Uh, Islam. Islam, yes. Do you know that the second fastest growing religion in the world behind Christianity is? Islam. Islam. Okay, Arabic is a major world language. One of my students that I had well over 10 years ago, Kyle Radcliffe, really, really good guy. He's traveling all over the Middle East now. Uh, he works with the FBI. He works with the CIA. Um, his minor, he works with other government agencies. Um, he helps out. One of his studies in college was Arabic. He can speak and write, and plus he, he did things in counterintelligence and all kinds of cool things that he studied, but he's working for our federal government and he's traveled around the world uh, and he helps decipher different Arabic messages that could affect our security here in the United States. But he learned Arabic and that was a skill that was needed by our federal government. They hired him and now he's doing very, very nicely for himself. You know, so, I want you to think about these things. Some of the things that we go through as I'm teaching these lessons and we're talking about this, I also want you to think about, is this something you would be interested in when you get older? Could you see yourself being a linguist and working for the federal government and helping our government with some of these things? You know, some of these opportunities that are at your fingertips as you get older, as young people, you've never even thought about. You've never even thought about it. and it may intrigue you it may interest you as a kid I loved espionage and spying and working for the government when I was a little boy in school elementary I wanted to be an FBI agent the FBI just fascinated me now as I got older um, I, I went many different directions but when I was little the FBI and the federal government and all of that just fascinated me. And languages, I've always been interested uh, in, in world languages. So you have Altaic, um, Turkish, all right? You put here the country of Turkey, all right? Altaic, so kind of that Central Asia area, Uralic, all right? I want you to circle some of the countries here, Estonia, Finland, Hungary, Russia. Russian would be under the Uralic language family. Where would the last three be focused on? What continent? Africa. Africa. Okay. The last three you may want to make just a, like a little carrot or a little note off to the side. K, L, and M are all talking about the continent of Africa. The Niger Congo, Swahili would be the major language of the Niger Congo. The Nilo Saharan, okay, Central Africa, Northern Africa, and then Khoisan. All right, would be more in the south. Under Khoisan would be South Africa. Um, there's a language where they make clicking sounds. Okay, that would be under under these three. So very very interesting. Different parts of the world where you travel, um, you're going to see this. Now turn the page real quick. Page 146 and 147. I want you, if you would, just to highlight figure 5-5. Okay, figure 5-5. Because this, this is going to be a very important resource for you. Okay, and I will tell you right now, this map on page 146 and 147, you will see on your unit test in a couple weeks. Okay, you will definitely see it. Because this shows you where in the world these language families are located. So if I were to ask you, students, find the Korean language family on this map and put your finger on it. Then you would go ahead and you would do that, as I see a lot of you doing. If I were to say, okay, great, I want you to find your Uralic. And I want you to put your finger on Uralic. Where 
in the world would you really be, okay? So you could do that with each language family. You could find, you could find where these different languages are. So on page 146 and 147, this is an incredible resource for you. You need to know where these language families are located in the world. Did everybody hear that? You need to know that. If I were to say on the test, where is the Dravidian language located, you would need to be able to look and say, okay, Dravidian, oh, okay, India and Sri Lanka. Okay? Um, those are things that you need to know. All right, if you flip the page over to page 149, would you highlight figure 5-8? You need to know the language families within the continent of Africa. What are the two largest language families in Africa? Just by looking at that, at that map. Yep, James? Uh, Niger, Congo, and Afro-Asia. Yeah, Niger, Congo, and Afro-Asiatic would by far, right? By far be the two largest language families in Africa. Now, in the United States, all we are is Indo-European. But notice in Africa, they have a lot of different language families. Have you met anybody, students, let me ask you this, have you met anybody that speaks a different language? Okay, tell me, just talk to me real quick, how was your experience with that? Was it difficult to communicate with them? Were you bored by it? Were you put off by it? Like, no thanks. Or were you interested by it? Did you want to maybe learn? Talk to me a little bit. Hearing somebody speak a different language, um, did you try to communicate with them? Okay. What language did you hear that you, that you learned? Yeah. Well, this kid, like, when I was younger, when he came to our baseball team, he was from Colombia. He was from Colombia. Mm -hmm. For like, and then after like a year and a half, he kind of spoke English. Okay, he probably but, was speaking Spanish. But my dad can speak Spanish too, so he could talk to him, yeah. Okay, yeah, Rachel. Um, I used to go when I was younger to like this little like Vietnamese restaurant, and they would speak that language. I didn't know it was that, so like, I was older, but that was interesting. Okay, we're speaking Vietnamese. That is interesting. Um, Kat? All of my mom's extended family speaks French. So I can I can try to communicate with them, but most of the time I have no idea what they're saying. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jason Crane. That's pretty much all I've got. But I basically said, hello, my name is Jason Crane. I actually, in, in high school and college, that was the extent of it. Uh, my high school offered Spanish, French, and German. So um, I, I, was, uh, I ended up taking two years of French. Okay. Um, so let's look at, at uh, key issue key issue two here. Um, this is kind of a, a chart. A lot of kids kind of get confused here. Um, so you can kind of just fill this in. I know some of you may not have understood this, but we're talking about why is English related to other languages? So what we're focusing on is the Germanic branch. Okay, so the Germanic branch falls with, within what language family? Indo-European. Say again? Indo-European. Indo-European. Okay, so the Germanic branch is a branch of the tree. It falls within the Indo-European tree trunk. So within the Germanic branches, we have two kind of sub-branches. So you ever noticed on a tree you have a branch and then like little smaller branches that come off of it and then it has leaves on it? Kind of visualize that in your mind. The main branch of the Indo-European trunk would be Germanic branch, but off of that you have little tiny branches, all right, which would be the West Germanic 
and you have the north command. So within that, the two major ones in the West Germanic would be German and English. Now, does anybody in here know any German? Have any German background or know some German? All right, give it a shot. Uh, ich habe Wasser. Ooh, what's that mean? Uh, I have been drinking water. Okay. <laughs> it's random. All right. I know. All right, it's random, but I like it. I like random. All right, anyone else know any German? No German. Uh, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? That's, do you speak German? Oh my God. So, um, North Germanic, you have Danish, Faroese, by the way, Faroese. That's the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands, very good. Very small island chain, folk culture, again, in the North Atlantic. Icelandic and Norwegian and Swedish. Something very interesting about Icelandic. You know that Icelandic would be in the top five random trivia facts. Icelandic is in the top five most difficult languages to learn in the world. Very, very difficult to learn. Very, very intricate, complex, difficult the way they spell things, all the little. Um, it's like accents over. It's like little lines over stuff. Yeah, the there. lines over things and the, the accents yeah, and everything. So the nice. accents and everything. Very, very difficult. Yeah. Is Hungarian or Japanese also two of the markers for um, Mandarin, Mandarin Chinese would be up there. Russian would be up there. Um, so there, there, there are some that are just so, so difficult to, to learn. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Let's look at number two and then we'll stop. We'll stop with number two. Okay? So tomorrow we'll pick up with number three and beyond. So number two, you have the Indo-Iranian branch. Now the Indo-Iranian branch is also within Indo-European, right? So Indo-European is the trunk. Indo-Iranian would be the branch, right? It would be the branch. So languages, the Indic group in the East would be languages of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Those countries would be specific with the Indic group within this branch. There's over 438 languages spoken in India. We have one main language in English, all right, in the United States. So depending on what region of India you go to, you're more than likely gonna have a different language spoken, a different dialect spoken. Official languages of India, Hindi and English, 22 scheduled languages found there, Hindi spoken in many ways, but only written one way. Devangari. Very interesting that you see official languages in India. What's one of the languages? English. You know the most common language in India would be Hindi. That's the most common spoken language. In all the major cities in India, New Delhi, um, Mumbai, some of the major cities in India, Hindi is, is the spoken language. But English is also spoken. You go over to the western part, the Iranian group found in Iran, Southwest Asia, Central Asia. The most common language spoken in the western group would be Persian. Persian is the official language of Iran. Iran. Yep. Pashto would be the official language in Afghanistan. Terrorist groups like Hamas, uh, the Taliban, Al Qaeda that operate in Afghanistan speak Pashto, right? It's a form of the Iranian, Indo Iranian branch. Kurdish is used by the Kurds in Western Iran, and all is written in Arabic. So the number one written language within the Indo Iranian branch would be Arabic. Many of these people that speak Persian and Pashto. Pashto also speak, um, hang on, hang on. They also speak Arabic. One of the amazing things 
is a lot of students around the world, when they look at American or Western students, many students around the world can speak more.